Hello, welcome back to the chaos that is Shiny and Books. Today I think I'm going to start a reading vlog. I start a lot of reading vlogs and I don't always finish them. Um, but I had this idea a year ago when I soft dnf after a book. It was this book, it's called The Book Ninja, written by Ali Berg and Michelle Callis. How do I say that last time? Uh, no idea, but... Last year I started reading this when the buzzword-a-thon prompt was book words because obviously this has book in the title and I read a couple of chapters and I just wasn't feeling it and so I put it down and I think I read book lovers instead. Um, but this book gave me a good idea for a reading vlog if I ever wanted to pick it back up and I think now's the time. Basically what I've gathered from the beginning of this book and the synopsis is it is about this woman who wants to find love and she works in a bookshop. She decides that the way she's going to find a partner is she's going to drop her favorite books in random places with her contact details in it in hopes that someone will find it and contact her and it would spark a romance that way which is really fun me cute um but in the first few chapters i read of this last year i wasn't really loving it the main character i reread the first couple of chapters this morning um so i could recall the main character and the best friend work together in this bookshop and they're really judgy towards people's reading taste. Like they have this game they play where when a customer comes in, they make bets on what type of book they're going to buy, like what genre, which is a fun game. But this really attractive man comes in and she is really judgy over the fact that he's headed towards the young adult section. And she's like, no, 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 he must be lost. And then he ends up buying or picking up a Twilight book. And she's really judgy about that, like not to his face, but in her own head. And then when he's checking out, he tries to wipe chocolate off her face, which I don't know why a stranger would do that. And she mistakes that for him leaning in for a kiss. This man that she does not know, has had no interactions with. He's just there to buy a book. And so she kisses him on the nose when he was trying to wipe chocolate off her I, I don't even know how that scene came about. And then the very next scene when she goes to tell the best friend about it, um, the best friend, who is married and pregnant, tells her that she cheated on her husband with, like, this gym instructor. And that all happened in, like, the first 20 pages. I think I was 20 pages into this. Yeah, I've read 18 pages and that's all happened, um, again, so far this morning. Um, so I wasn't really vibing with it last year, but I'm going to push through because I feel like if I'm prepared for a silly goofy time, maybe it's okay. But the vlog idea. Um, this book, obviously... She works in a bookstore, she's talking about a lot of books, and she's leaving her favorite books around the city. And all of the books that she's referencing are real books, like they're not fictional made up books for the story, like they are real books. So this book mentions, how many times I'm going to say the word book? This book mentions a bunch of other books. So I thought it would be fun to read some of the books that this book mentions. So I'm going to read this book and then read the books that are in this book. Oh my god, just can't stop saying the word book. Um, so I'm tabbing it and so far I'm 18 pages in and I already have four tabs for four books. The reason I'm picking it now, I did flick through the back. There is like a glossary of all the books um, that's in it. I can't, I haven't looked through now, but when I first pieced up last year, um, one of the books that I'm planning on reading for my book club, by the way, I'm dressed like this guy, I'm about to have my book show, my book club live show. Um, one of the books that I'm reading for my book club next month, I think is in it, if I'm remembering correctly. And one other book I think I put on my TBR, I'm pretty sure is in it, if I my memory served me, but I don't remember any of the other books. So I don't want to look now, I want to be surprised reading it. So I'm going to find at least one or two maybe other books to read from this book. I'm going to stop saying the word book and I'm going to let you know when I've read this and what books are in it. Hello, we're going to ignore my pineapple head um, because we're back for the review of this book. I have finished it already. So to give it a positive comment, it was a quick read. Um, unfortunately, that's about where the positive comments end. Um, I think I already gave you the synopsis, but it is about this woman who is looking for love. So since she is a book lover, she decides that she's going to leave her favorite books within the public transport in Melbourne, Australia on the trains with her details in them so that the men who find them can contact her and start a romance because she thinks that if their reading tastes align then they are made for each other. It is such a fun idea and it could have been a really fun book. It was not. The main, well all characters pretty much are just really infuriating to read from. Um, I can get on board with an unlikable character but not when they're just like utterly annoying. Like <laughs> So the two women, I already talked about how in the first 20 pages they have been really really judgy towards people's reading tastes and that continues throughout the entire book. 
but it continues and that's not just the first page that was a theme in the book like they're really judgy if you don't like the classics if you're not a jane austen fan if you haven't read george orwell like don't even be a reader and don't dare be an adult reading young adult according to these women like they will judge you because apparently reading and books aren't valid unless it is the main character's favorite books um these women are meant to be 30 I'm pretty sure they're 30, but they act like teenagers. I, why do I keep reading books where grown women act like teenagers? I hate it. I hate it. It keeps happening. And I think it maybe didn't bother me before because I was younger. But now that I am about to turn 30, I don't want to read other 30 year olds just being so childish and immature and mean. They're mean girls. But the other best friend is also pregnant and she tells the main character that she's cheated on her husband. It is, they're not nice. So that's that. Um, but the fun I do just wasn't fun anymore because I didn't like reading about the main characters. Like I didn't even want her to find love because like, why would anyone like her? She's so mean and judgy. And then the main, obviously this is like, she's finding love, it's a romance. The guy who she is becoming involved with, he is like constantly chasing after her. And I'm like, why are you chasing her? You're really nice. Like go find someone nice. She's not nice. Don't chase her. What is she even giving you? Like, why are you chasing after her? because she's just so judgy and mean. But the concept was so fun. She also, obviously, it's not going to be only men that are picking up these books. She's leaving them in public transport where anyone can find them. And at one point, a woman contacts her, but she doesn't know it's a woman because the girl's name is Ashley, which is obviously, couldn't be a man's name as well. Um, and so she meets up with Ashley expecting a man and a woman turns up, but the woman is, she's contacted her. The woman is obviously a lesbian. And the main character just could not find a way to tell her like she was like how am I gonna tell this woman that I'm not interested in women couldn't just say like oh I'm so sorry like I'm not into women we can just have this nice coffee date and talk about books because their book tastes align clearly she couldn't say that the what she did is just sat there awkwardly and then yells in the middle of the restaurant cafe wherever they were I love dick that is the way that she tells this really polite and lovely woman that there was a miscommunication like you couldn't just say politely like you have to yell I love dick to this woman who obviously thinks you're interested in her and I also read some I went and read some other people's reviews because obviously I wanted to see if I was the only one who did not enjoy this book there were some other one star reviews that picked up on a few things that were actually things that I missed but like there were mistakes she goes into this all woman's hospital and then she writes that there was a, like a male patient when she'd said that it was an all woman's hospital and there was also another like medical thing that was written about that I obviously won't spoil you to say what it was, but there was a medical thing that was written about that didn't actually make sense. And this review had like debunked it to say like that would, that's not how that happens. Um, so the authors obviously didn't really research into what they were writing about. Um, this felt like it was written in, what year was it written in? I'm so sorry. I'm just ranting about this book. Um, this is not how I thought it was going to go. It was written in 2018. But it feels like it feels like it would have been written in the 90s or like early noughties. Like it feels like a women's fiction from then. It feels like it could be like a 90s sitcom because like some of the things she was doing and the, the comedy that was in it, it felt like something that would have been appropriate for that time, but not for 2018. Like, like if you told me this book was written in 1999, I'd be like, oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. It, that's what it feels like. Um, doesn't feel like modern fiction. On the characters, the humor, just the comments, everything. Unfortunately, not a success, but what was a success is this is how many books were mentioned in it. I started tabbing and I regretted it because then I wasted so many tabs, which I'm, hope I'm hoping I could take these out and like reuse them because if I had known this is how many times books were going to be mentioned, then I wouldn't have tabbed. I would have just like dog eared or something. Um, so the book itself wasn't a success, but the concept for this video was a success because lots of books were mentioned. I did start with the color coordination theme where I had like one color for books that I was not interested in reading, one for books that I was interested in reading, one for books that I owned and one for books that I had read. Um, but I started like I was running out of certain colors. So it, after that, it just got a bit mishmashed. Um, so I'm going to go through every single book that is in this book. And yes, I know like a year ago, I flipped to the back to the, I, I, I know I could have just gone to the reference page at the back and read through all of the books that was in it. But it was so much more fun to read the book and be like looking for when the next book is going to be mentioned. So that was fun for me, looking out for the books. I probably missed a few um, because my eyes started to glaze over. But once I decided I wasn't really interested in the story, 
Honestly, the thing that kept me going was like finding all of the book references. So I'm going to tell you every single book that was mentioned in this book. Um, and then I'm going to take these tabs out and see if they're still sticky enough to reuse. And then we'll talk about what I'm going to read. Okay, very first page, we have our first mention, Emma. We have Jasper Jones and Jasper Jones again, The Crossroad, High Fidelity, Wuthering Heights, Rosemary's Baby, Fifty Shades of Grey, Fifty Shades Darker, New Moon, New Moon again, The Goldfinch, Catch-22, Gone with the Wind, Lost and Found, which I think I DNF'd, Othello, The Hunger Games, Mila 18, Lily and the Octopus, The Scarlet Letter, Eat, Pray, Love, City of Bones, A Divergent, read both of those ones, Northanger Abbey, The Rosie Project, I didn't really like that one, Animal Farm, The Girl on the Train, The Thing About Jane, The Complete Poems of Winnie the Pooh, Ulysses, The Shining, Fifty Shades of Grey, The Princess Bride, A Tale of Two Cities, We Are All Completely Beside Ourselves, 1984, A Little Life, which I refuse to read, Big Little Lies, my favourite book, Never Let Me Go, The Great Gatsby, The Art of Dancing in the Rain, A Series of Unfortunate Events, to Kill a Mockingbird, which I believe I read in school. Born Girl, which I loved. The Girl on the Train. My Brilliant Friends. Something Borrowed. Wuthering Heights, again. Fifty Shades of Grey, again. The Count of Monte Cristo. The Secret History, which I think I DNF'd. The Time Traveler's Wife, One Day. And My Sister's Keeper, I read that one in high school. Middlesex, Lady Susan. The Wind Up Bird Chronicle. The Hate You Give, I have read. The Giver. Finding Nevo, Dear Martin. Man's Search for Meaning. Birdsong, The Course for Love, Station Eleven, Little Fires Everywhere, Pride and Prejudice, Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine, I've read that one too, The Alchemist, The Bronze Horseman, Belly Laughs, Catcher in the Rye, which I hated, I Feel Bad About My Neck, What to Expect When You're Expecting, which I did read when I was pregnant, The Exorcist, The Anatomy of Melancholy, The Unlikely Pilgrimage of Harold Fry, Gone Girl, the Alchemist again, A Burrita, 11 Minutes, Aleph, and The Pilgrimage, Koala Lu, Lonely and the Moon, Under the Love Umbrella, No One Likes a Fart, Snow White, War and Peace, which I'm absolutely not reading, and The Kite Runner, Sense and Sensibility, The Golf, The Dry, Redemption, The Book Thief, An Abundance of Catherines, Star Girl, Wonder, A Monster Calls, Looking for Alaska, Eleanor and Park, The Maze Runner, We Were Liars, are You There God, It's Me Margaret, Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief, Holes, I'll Give You the Sun, Tin Man, I'll Give You the Sun Again, My Dear Cassandra, My Dear Cassandra Again, Red Queen, If I Stay, The Shadow of the Wind, The Hunger Games, Divergent, The Perks of Being a Wallflower, The Knife of Never Letting Go, which she is calling Cringe Cringe Cringe, but I think this book is Cringe Cringe Cringe, Aragon, which I think I had as a kid, it's kind of a funny story, The Fault in Our Stars, Divergent, Daughter of Smoke and Bone, Cinder, Pride and Prejudice again, Gone with the Wind, Dr. Zivago, I don't know how to say that, The Sun Also Rises, To All the Boys I've Loved Before, Pride and Prejudice again, and again, Walk of Fame, When Breath Becomes Air, and Eleanor and Park again. So I have decided to make a spreadsheet of all of the books that were listed within the book. Uh, so here we have the 140 books that were within the book. Then I decided to color code. So in the blue, we have books that I have already read. Pink are the books that I own and have on my shelf or on my TBR or that I do not own, but I have heard of and could be convinced to read. And then white is I either do not want to read it or I just don't know enough about it to put it in the TBR category. And then here we have all of those separated. So we have 28 books that I have read. 23 books that I have on my TBR or would be willing to read. And the biggest section, we have 90 books that, or 91, I should say, books that I do not want to read. Obviously, 23 books is too big for one video. So I am considering doing a part two because some of these books I think would be fun to vlog. So we had lots of books mentioned within that book that I have read already, including my favorite book, or one that I keep saying is my favorite book. I need to do a reread. If you want to reread with me, I think I'm going to make this a book club pick so I can make people read it and discuss it with me. But we have some books that I have read a while ago, including Twilight, which she kept going on about how much she hated in this book. We have some books that I didn't really like and some books that I did like, To All the Boys I've Loved Before, Eleanor Oliphant, Wonder, Gone Girl. So let's build the TBR. 
Okay, so the book that I had, the one book that I had remembered from when I originally read that list a year ago is Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. And I am planning to read this this month anyway because I picked it for my book club, my very new book club that if you would like to join, I would love to have you. I'm picking a book from a range of genres. We did horror the first month, this is the second month, and it's literary fiction. I'm planning next year, I've got some romance picks, I have some mystery picks. Um, I just did the first live show and it was so much fun. I'm very excited to discuss this with everyone, but this is a five-star prediction for me. So I'm very excited to get into it and I hope I have much more success than the book it was written in. Um, and this one is about this kind of a rich suburb, you know, where they have their perfect lawns, their perfect houses, everything looks beautiful, everyone acts perfect. And this single mother moves to the town with her daughter she and her daughter become involved with this main family that we're following in the town. And then there is this controversy about this white family adopting a Chinese baby. And assuming there's going to be some racial commentary towards that. Very excited. This is definitely on the TBR. I've actually already started it. So very excited to get to the end of it. The next book that I thought I remembered... Um, this book, so I put it on my TBR for the month. I'm so glad that I remembered correctly and I didn't put it on my TBR for nothing. But A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness, which I'm realizing this is have been adapted and so has this. This, I don't know what it's about, but I think it's sad and I am very nervous. There were sadly there weren't that many books that I was interested in. Um, I think on my shelf I should have. Let me even grab it. I'm not organized. Oh no. Okay, the next book that I'm thinking I'm probably going to pick is The Dry by Jane Harper. I read another Jane Harper earlier this year and I enjoyed it. She's an Australian author and I've had this sitting here for so long. I just keep putting it off. Like I'm literally never going to read it if I don't put it in this video, I think. Even though I'm not really in the mood for this genre um, and I honestly have no idea what it's about. This has also been adapted. Then The Girl on the Train has been sitting in my shelf also for years. Got it for $2. The sticker's still on it. I don't really want to read this one though, but I feel like I kind of have to because the whole premise of this book is that she's leaving books on the train and this has train in the title, <laughs> but I don't know. This one's a maybe because I don't think I'm just not in the mood for this. I want romances and none of these romances. I mean, this kind of is, but I don't want to read this either. <laughs> I've read a bunch of other John Green and I've seen the movie to this. This book has just been sitting here and it's actually in a pile behind my shelves, which is an unhaul pile, a pile I'm planning to get rid of. Um, so do I read it or do I get rid of it? I don't know. Also, The Shining was in that book. Um, I'm not going to read this for this video. Um, I will get this to this eventually. I'll get to it eventually. I also have Koala Lu. When I found this in my son's book section. I've obviously read this before, but I'm going to read it for the vlog because let's just add something else to this video. The Kite Runner was also mentioned. But I think this is also sad and I really, I'm not in the mood for sad. So I don't think, I, I don't know. I'll keep it here as a maybe, but I don't want to read this yet. I don't want to read it yet. Holes was also mentioned. I don't know. But I kind of want to read all of the books that the main character was hating on because she was hating on like a young adult and fiction directed at a younger audience. So I kind of want to read things like this because it was specifically in the book because the character was like hating on it so here's another option this should be quick also but i don't know i can't read all of these books in this vlog i was hoping for i don't know i was hoping for something else maybe i'll have a look through these books again and see if there's something else that catches my eye i also have somewhere it's not in this room i don't know where it is it got packed up in a box and maybe i lost it or maybe it's still hiding away somewhere but i actually do own the Fifty Shades of Grey books that I've never read and they were mentioned in this. Is this going to be the time that I read Fifty Shades of Grey? I don't think I want to put myself through that. I don't think that's a book for me, but we'll see. We will see. I would like to come on here and say I was right. I was right. I knew I would love this book. I think I've already gone over the synopsis for it. I'm really, really excited to do the live discussion at the end of the month with the book club. Um, this is the book for me. This is the book for me. 
like I said before, we're following this town with a bunch of rich families and this single mom and her daughter moves into town and they become involved with this one family the richardsons the mother becomes a like housekeeper in the house and the daughter becomes friends with all of the richardson children and i don't really know how much is in the synopsis because i feel like i didn't really know 100 percent what's going to happen but these two mothers the single mom and the richardson mom are on opposing sides of this big controversy that unfolds in their town because this very rich family who has had so much struggle trying to get pregnant which i really related to that they did talk about how it was for the mother getting miscarriages after miscarriages when you're trying to get pregnant it is really hard i have experienced that so when they finally get to adopt a child obviously they are so excited and so happy the, chi the child is chinese and they are white and i don't know if i want to say too much because it's not written on the back but yeah a big controversy happens around that adoption and the two women are on opposing sides there's this big legal battle and yeah it's just this was the book for me i'm gonna give it five stars i'm very happy that i read it and i don't know if i want to watch the show because i watched the trailer i'm just not a tv person i never watch tv my tv barely gets used if it were if it were a movie i could maybe be persuaded to watch it but it's a series and that's just a lot of time that i don't know if i want to commit to have a look at the show and see how it compares to the book but my review is that i love the book and i've moved on to the second book for this video which i may have made a mistake if i had have read the back of this book i probably wouldn't have picked it up um because it is this mystery in this small australian town where an entire family has been killed a wife and her six-year-old son are both murdered in their house which if i had read it's on the back um i that's what i avoid i do not want to read about wives and their sons being killed that is not what i want to read um but the wife and her son are killed leaving the baby in the house alive and the husband is later found in his car also having killed himself so it's assumed that he killed them and then went and committed suicide after the fact and the husband's one of his friends from childhood is the main character that we're following aaron fork and he has moved out of this small town and lives in melbourne but he's come back to the town to attend the funeral and he's a policeman so he is doing some investigating of his own because obviously growing up he was very close to the family and the best friend who died his mom has said i don't think my son did it um and so yeah the main character is looking into it if i had read that a woman and a six-year-old boy is going to be described as being murdered in their home i wouldn't have picked it up because that's not what i want <laughs> but now that i've started i can't I, I have to find out what happens like i can't just leave it there <laughs> so i am going to finish it i am i've got the audiobook so i think today i'm going to do some cleaning and listen to the rest on audio i'm only a few chapters in so there's not much to say i will say that jane harper really really writes australian small towns like you feel like you're in that small town maybe if you're not from australia and not familiar with australian small towns then maybe you won't like it as much but she writes it very well which is interesting because i'm pretty sure she grew up in the uk but she really gets the australian small town men correct i thought that in her other book as well um the middle-aged men who grew up in small towns who live in small towns she's got them <laughs> she's got them described pretty much 100 percent accurate in my opinion um i'm sad i don't think this one's gonna be five stars like i just don't her previous book that i've read from her i think this one's her debut um but the other book that i read from her it got five stars simply because there was just too much in that book that i related to and i was sobbing crying and this one it's the opposite way like i don't want to read about a family who's been murdered so my fault that was my fault but i'm gonna read it still and i'm gonna see how i feel hi i just wanted to come on and acknowledge my error because this book was not for me i'm not reading it on goodreads because it is through my own fault that my personal enjoyment was not as high um yeah i did not want to read an entire scene through the pov of the killer about how they slaughtered this mother and and then ran after the six-year-old child also killed the six-year-old child and then considered also shooting the 18 month old baby in the cot um had i known that that was going to be in there which again my own fault i wouldn't have even bothered picking it up but i did finish it and i will say that i do like the australian rural small town vibes that jane harper writes about i'm not sure that i would be as interested in her books was i not an australian um but yeah i do think when it comes to mystery books i i'm okay with like a really slow burn 
type of story like this one. I know some people don't like that. I personally, that was okay. The setting was okay. Um, it's just this particular <laughs> story that we were following was not for me. Again, my fault. But if this was following a different crime, I could probably give this four or five stars. Um, but the crime that it was following, didn't want to read about that, didn't want to read it in detail, and yet that's what I got in this book. I was kind of hoping there was not going to be a detailed scene because at the start it just kind of like mentioned what the crime was. But at the end when everything was revealed, yeah, we got a POV from the killer. So no, didn't like that. But at least I've read this book now. Um, it was an op shop or thrift store find. I think actually my mum got it for me. So I don't even think I paid for this book. So I am happy to have it off my TBR shelf. So that's fine. Um, I'm going to move on and I'm kind of regretting not picking that Lainey Taylor book. So do I do a part two to this? And instead I'll read that one. edit and upload this vlog and I realized I forgot to film the final clip. Um, so in this video I read uh, this book which I hated and then I read a couple of books that were mentioned in this book. I have one book that has become a new favorite for me which I already knew this was going to be good. I loved this. This was five stars. It's probably going to make my favorite to the year and then I read one book that I did not like. I actually hated it but it was my own fault because I just don't want to read about a mum and a child that have been slaughtered in their home so I did not end up reading this one because I'm having a lot of health related anxiety at the moment and from the synopsis it sounds like this is following a boy whose mum is very ill which is exactly what I don't want to read so I think I'm going to hold off with this one and I didn't read this one because again I wasn't in the mood for like a mystery thriller I was in the mood for fun things but nothing else was fun like this was meant to be fun but it was horrible <laughs> and then I of course have Koala Lu, which I have read before so this didn't really count but please let me know from the list of the books that you heard me say were mentioned in this one uh, which books do you recommend that I read uh, because I would like to do a part two of this video and I need to know which ones I should choose because I'm interested in the Lainey Taylor book if I can get my hands on that one. Um, and there's a couple of other books that I'm interested in. Stephen Rowley I've read from before and I think he had one book mentioned in here. So please let me know if you think there's a book that I should pick because in the new year I might do round two of reading more books that were mentioned in this book. Um, but yeah, this was just a silly, funny idea to get through some books that have been sitting on my shelf. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in another video soon.